that imprisoned island. The purpose of these bases can be none other than to provide a nuclear strike capability against the Western Hemisphere. Khrushchev decided to send missiles there at the diplomatic signal. Don't invade Cuba, we are serious. But without any hesitation, because we were being harassed. The Cuban Missile Crisis, the struggle of power. The Cuban Missile Crisis was the 13-day compromise that took place in 1962. This almost led to nuclear war between the USSR and the US. Then escalated the tension with other countries and the Cold War. Years later, it has led to the regulations we have in place around the world today. The Cuban Missile Crisis was an event that took place in 1962 that almost led to nuclear war. The event was important because it was one of the first threatening of nuclear missiles in almost 17 years, since the bombing of Hiroshima in 1945, which took place in World War II. The missile crisis took place between the USSR and the US. This was during the Cold War, which was a war with no weapons, but the tensions were very high. After, they both tried to beat each other in many races, like the race to try to put a man on the moon, or the arms race. Each one always tried to beat each other at something, even though they had the same amount of power. This is what caused the missile crisis to happen in the first place, because when the US placed missiles in Turkey, it gave more power to the US. To even it out, the Soviet Union proceeded and placed unwarranted missiles in Cuba. Build up. The placing of missiles in Turkey by the United States advanced the issue to the point where the Soviet Union retaliated and placed missiles in Cuba. When U-2 fighter pilots found the missiles in Cuba, the 13 days started abruptly. The range of the missiles depended on the type of the missile, with the SS-4 reaching a top of 2,500 kilometers and the SS-5 reaching up to 5,000 kilometers. During this time, newspapers were being written every other day. This was one of the biggest events that had happened since World War II. This started when on day seven, the president made an announcement to the public and entire nation. During this time, newspapers were big because they captured the exact time and date of the event. As well, TVs were very expensive, which is why they were in such a high demand. But before we go on, let's go further back and see where this all started in the first place. Before the Cuban Missile Crisis, Kennedy was trying to overthrow Castro, who was trying to diminish the effect Americans had on Cuba. During this time, Cuba developed a relationship with the Soviet Union. This caused the Bay of Pigs, which was an invasion that took place in 1961, that failed. This was an attempt to show China and Russia that the United States was set on winning the Cold War. This led to Castro communicating to the Soviet Union for defensive support, which started the movement of missiles into Cuba. As well, the buildup included the arms race and the space race, which in 1961 the USSR technically won, so the first ones have a man orbit the Earth. Even though we had the first man on the moon, we did not have the first man into space, which just increased in tension because they were trying to beat each other. The arms race then took place, which was a race to see who could build the better, more powerful weapons. The main event was a 13-day crisis known as the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. Day 1. On day 1, U-2 fighter pilots found missile evidence of missile sites in Cuba. This was the start of the first 13 days. There are immediate ideas of how to stop them, like to quarantine or invade. Day 2. On day 2, they found further evidence of missiles on Cuba. They found 16 to 32 missiles. Day 3. On day 3, bring the Soviet Foreign Minister Andriy Gromyko, who met, told Kennedy that the moving to Cuba was purely defensive aid. Kennedy replied, knowing the missiles were in Cuba, stating if weapons were found in Cuba, there would be grave consequences. Day 5. Day 5 brought five hours of intense discussion from where they decided to quarantine and not invade. They end the meeting with if they were to invade, they would have to use an airstrike, but it would have to involve 100% destruction of the missiles. Day 6. On day six, the president talks to the general of the Air Force, who tells him an airstrike would not guarantee 100% of missiles of the missiles being destroyed, which was important because it meant that that couldn't invade, they would have to quarantine. Day seven. By day seven, the president was starting to involve other countries and presidents, informing them on the issue. As well, John F. Kennedy informs the nation about what is happening, and this also brought the U.S. to tell the locations of the nuclear bunkers. This was the news that was released to the public. 
unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive missile sites is now in preparation on that imprisoned island. The purpose of these bases can be none other than to provide a nuclear strike capability against the Western Hemisphere. Day 8. On day 8, the President sends a letter to the Soviet Union pleading them to remove the missiles before military action has to be taken. As well, John F. Kennedy officially writes the naval quarantine around Cuba. This is important because it is the first action taken by either side, meaning Cuba could now retaliate. Day 9. On day 9, the Soviet Union replies to the U.S. about the letter sent on the 23rd of October, day 8. He said that the U.S. is trying to intimidate them into submission. Day 10. On day 10, Kennedy pleaded in a letter again to again remove the missiles since some were now functional. Meanwhile, in the UN, the Soviet Union, and the US both made their cases about what happened. The American ambassador being more aggressive, plain out lashed out and showed pictures of the missiles. On day 11, day 11, both sides started to agree on a conclusion to the current problem, with the US to remove quarantine from Cuba and swear to not invade Cuba. If these were followed, they would remove all missiles from Cuba. Day 12. On day 12, a U-2 American fighter pilot shot down making routine checks over Cuba. After this, he was then awarded the Distinguished Service Medal by JFK himself. During this time, the Soviet Union demanded more with the U.S. to remove all missiles in Turkey as well. In the meeting with John F. Kennedy and his advisors, advisors he stated that the removals of missiles in Turkey would have to be part of the overall ID deal. The advisors did not agree. So he met with the ambassador of the Soviet Union in secret and finally brought a conclusion to the missile crisis with the removal of missiles from Cuba for taking off the quarantine and taking the missiles out of Turkey. Day 13 brought an end to the Cuban Missile Crisis with an announcement in newspapers. This brought an end to the missile crisis with the removal of all weapons and missiles from Cuba. This was a day of peace and remembrance bringing no wars but left a bomb-sized crater in the tension of the Cold War. Short term. The biggest short term impact was the fact that the Soviet Union did not like what Khrushchev did, so there was an uproar of power in 1964, which caused a military buildup. This was important because it decreased relations between the US and the USSR. The other short term impact is they both agreed to stop nuclear testing above ground in 1963, which was very big because it started the guidelines about nuclear missiles that are in place today. But too often these meetings have produced only darkness, discord, or disillusion. Yesterday, a shaft of light cut into the darkness. Negotiations were concluded in Moscow on a treaty to ban all nuclear tests in the atmosphere, in outer space, and underwater. For the first time, an agreement has been reached on bringing the forces of nuclear destruction under international control. Long term. A long term impact was the tension of the Cold War increased because the Soviet Union was determined to never be pushed around again, leaving the Soviet Union to try to catch up in the arms race. As well, many of the guidelines about nuclear's ha nuclear missiles have been formed around this topic, which has benefited the entire world. This also taught many presence around the world and civilians that safety from nuclear missiles is worth giving up a nuclear capability strike. Conclusion In conclusion, the Cuban Missile Crisis was a scary 13-day event that almost led to nuclear war. The short-term and long-term impacts were very massive, and the event itself will go down in history forever. The impacts itself were very helpful because it increased relations between the U.S. and Russia. This is important because the efficiency in which we can now communicate is huge and leaves the ability to resolve conflicts quicker and more safely. Even though we may not realize it, the missile crisis may have had more of an effect than originally thought. The benefits of the missile crisis were massive, but so were the faults.